I want to direct your attention this afternoon to Luke, the gospel as recorded by the Apostle Luke. It's a story in the 18th chapter that I know everyone is familiar with. This is not something you've never heard before. I'm certain you've heard it and you're familiar with it. Luke chapter 18, and if we would read verses 18 through verse number 23. We're going to have a car going behind us here in a second. Luke chapter 18, verses 18 through 23. You couldn't get any more Florida than that vehicle, could you? Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> that personifies Florida so well. A uh, pickup. Yeah, but no, a, a Humvee, oh, a, Hummer, yeah. <laughs> a Hummer in camouflage, amen. Luke chapter 18, verses 18 through 23 today, reads from the King James, And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is, God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Amen. I want to talk to us for a little while this afternoon. Let me, there we go. I want to talk to us for a little while on the topic. You must take it personally. Amen. You must take it personally. If we'll just go to the Lord in prayer for a moment. Father, once again, God, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege that we have as people of God to go to the Word of God where we find sustenance for our soul. We find in this Word, O oh God, today that which is necessary to the establishment and the building of our faith. We ask God that you would bless your Word at this hour. Bless your messenger. Help us, Lord, to deliver unto the people of God that which you've given us to deliver, that the saints of God might be satisfied in their soul, not in their mind, not in their thinking, but in their soul by the richness, the sweetness, the pureness of your word. For we ask it today in none other than Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. You know, many Christians today, including many preachers and theologians, make any number of errors by not taking into account the time frame during which a specific passage of God's Word is recorded. For instance, many fail to realize that while the Lord walked the, the earth, the law of Moses was still very much in effect. The Lord stated that He had not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill them both. In Matthew 5, 17 through 19, the Lord said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. 
until the Lord Jesus Christ declared on the cross of Calvary, it is finished. The law remained in full effect. Therefore, when the rich man came to the Lord Jesus and asked him, what must I do to inherit uh, the kingdom of God? The Lord's answer was within the confines of that truth. The law was still very much in effect. He was recognized as a Jewish rabbi, a teacher, and therefore he instructed according to and within the parameters of the law. And he told this young man, well, you know the commandments, you know, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't do this, don't do that. And the young man said, well, I've done all these things ever since I was young. So that I, I'm, I've done all this so I should be good the Lord said yeah but there's one thing that you're yet lacking there's one thing yet that you could do that you should do and what was that one thing the Lord said go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor but listen a lot of people get very twisted and very turned around in their beliefs and in their doctrine and in their teaching many people will try to tell you one that this is something god requires of everybody that believers should all sell everything they have and give it to the poor that's not what the lord was saying here it's not at all what the Lord was saying here. First of all, you have to bear in mind that this young man came to the Lord with a very specific question. He said, good master, listen to me, children. What must I do? It's very important. He did not come to him and say, good master, what must men do? What must people do? What must we all do? That's not what he asked. He said, what must I do? And when the Lord answered him with uh, points of the law and told him, well, don't commit adultery, don't do this, don't do this. The man said, well, I've done all these things since my youth. And the Lord's response once again was a personalized response. He said, yes, but there's one thing thou lackest. You know, if there's any problem the church has today, if there's any issue that Christians have today, it is with the fact that too many Christians want to stick their nose in everybody else's business. When the truth of the matter is that our walk with God, our Christian experience, our salvation is a very personal one-on-one -on -one thing. It is not a generalized thing. Some people say, yes, but we all have to do the same thing to be saved. Yes, there is a requirement of the gospel that we embrace and believe and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. But once we've done that, all of a sudden we stand in a land of variables. All of a sudden we're in a place where we're not all necessarily on the same ground. We're not all standing at the same place. Some people are coming out of uh, horrendous upbringing and some people are coming out of abusive relationships. Some people are coming out of addiction issues. They've had to wrestle with alcohol. They've had to wrestle with drug addiction. Others are coming from a place of uh, <laughs> that some of us would look at and say, boy, they've had it good, you know. They grew up wealthy. They grew up well-to-do. They never knew what struggle was. Their mom and dad were church folks. They were believers. They were faithful to the house of God. They knew how to pray. They knew how to worship. They knew how to be faithful to the work of God. But you see, not all of us come from the same place. Every single believer is coming from a different experience and a different place in their life and yet there are so many who want to apply a standard to others that 
in, like I preached recently, that many of them don't even apply to themselves. But many want to apply a generalized standard. And we constantly hear people say, well, Christians shouldn't do this, and a Christian can't do that, and a Christian and a Christian and a Christian. And in saying this, they imply that all believers fall under this tent and that it's impossible to be a child of God. It's impossible to be a born again believer if you do this or if you say that or if you're weak here or if you fall there. When the truth of the matter is today, you must take this personally. Hello now. Amen. You know, sometimes people will say things that hurt your feelings. People will say things that uh, offend you. And mom or dad will come along and say, honey, you mustn't take that personally. You know, you've, you've got to learn not to personalize these things. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to uh, the mandates of God's word, you must take it personally. Because the truth of the matter is, everybody's walk with God is individual. Everybody's walk with God is is different until the Lord died on the cross of Calvary before he declared it is finished the law of Moses was in effect therefore he applied the law of Moses to the rich young rulers question we see the Lord declaring in John 19 30 when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost but then in Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 4 the Apostle Paul writes there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So if we were to go to the Lord today and say, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? He's not going to bring the law into the equation because the law is no longer binding. Amen. There may be some other things, but it won't be the law. Bearing in mind the time frame in which the meeting of the rich man with the Lord took place, we understand now that the Lord was speaking uh, to him of this important principle. He was not speaking of universal mandate, listen children, but he was speaking of personal requirement. The young man said, what must I do? The Lord said, one thing thou lackest. He didn't say one thing many lackest. He didn't say one thing most people lack. He didn't say one thing some people lack. He said, one thing thou lackest. There's an important principle to be understood here. And that principle is, you must take this personally. In Matthew 6, 19 through 21, we read the Lord's words. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, you know, it's interesting. The Lord is here speaking of that which he had spoken to the rich young ruler. He said, go and sell all that you have. He said, then you'll have many, many treasures in heaven. Did he say that if you do this, you'll get into heaven? That that'll put you in heaven? 
no. He said, no, this is how you can assure yourself of reward once you get there. I've told people, I don't know how many times I've preached from our pulpit in Dallas, and I've talked about the fact that uh, there are many things in the Word of God that are not uh, binding upon your salvation. It's not about whether or not you're going to make heaven. Making heaven is about believing and obeying the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the requirement for heaven. He is the door. He is the way. He is our entry. There is no other. So getting into heaven, don't let people stand there and tell you, if you're going to get into heaven, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to be this, you've got to be that. No, getting into heaven is contingent upon our faith and obedience to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is where it begins and that is where it ends. No, beyond that, we get into the realms of reward. There are many people, the Word of God says, who in essence are going to get into heaven by the skin of their teeth. They may get in there, but they're going to find out their living quarters are small. They're going to have an inside cabin. For those of you who have ever uh, traveled on a cruise ship, you understand what I mean. You know, the inside cabins tend to be kind of small and lackluster. There's no windows. You can't look out. There's not a lot to see from an inside cabin. You're on the ship. You get to enjoy all the benefits of being on the ship, but you don't have a whole lot in your little quarters to enjoy. Uh, Tommy and I have done cruises. We've done inside cabins. We've done uh, cabins with windows. We've done cabins with the balcony. I like a balcony cabin. That's so nice. Gives you a little extra amenity to enjoy while you're on the cruise. There's going to be a lot of people in heaven who have inside cabins. Oh yeah, you made it. Praise God. You obeyed the gospel. You believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as the word of God says and you're able to partake of the benefits and blessings of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But honey, you're not going to have a whole lot up there because you hadn't laid up a whole lot. You haven't put a whole lot up there. You're not going to get a whole lot of reward because you haven't done a whole lot uh, that the Lord will reward you for. The Bible said when the Lord returns, he will reward every man according to his works. So there is reward, but reward is one thing, and salvation is something different. It's so important today that believers understand this important truth. So many Christians want to sit in judgment of one another, and they want to try to suggest that another believer won't make it into heaven because of this or because of that, when the truth of the matter is, honey, they're going to be sitting right there beside you. There ain't a thing in the world you can do about them getting into heaven. They've obeyed, they've believed, they have trusted, their faith and confidence is in Jesus Christ, and there's not a thing in the world you can do to keep them out of God's holy city. So you can preach whatever you want to preach. You can talk whatever you want to talk and push whatever you want to push. But there's not a thing in the world going to keep them out of heaven. Now there may be things in their life that are going to keep them from reward. There may be things that are going to prevent them from receiving certain blessings and benefits and glory that they might otherwise have had an opportunity to receive, but they're going to make it in. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm so glad for the grace of God. God's grace is there not just for the one who grew up with a godly mom and dad, not just for those who grew up with a preacher for a daddy and a praying mom and who grew up in an ideal Christian home and they walked in victory their entire life and did everything just exactly the way that they were told everything was supposed to be done. I'm glad for the grace of God that's there for those souls who struggle. I'm glad for the grace of God that's there for those who have weaknesses in their life, who have imperfections, who have struggles. Praise God, the Lord said, it's in your weakness that my strength is manifested. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad for the grace of God, aren't you? Praise the name of the Lord. 
the Lord declared in Matthew 16 27 for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels and then he shall reward every man according to his works in 1st Corinthians 3 and verse 8 the Lord uh, the Word of God declares now he that planteth and he that watereth are one and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor in Revelation 22 verse 12 Jesus is speaking and he declares and behold I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be children you must take this personally amen this isn't about corporate requirements this isn't about universal mandates no salvation is offered to all who will believe and obey the gospel of jesus christ the minute you have believed and obeyed this gospel your walk with god from that moment forward becomes a personal one-on-one -on -one walk amen what god may ask of someone else is not what the lord may ask of you and what he asks of you he may not ask of anyone else mm -hmm. in, in Romans chapter 14 verses 12 through 23 trying to move quickly it almost looks like rain is wanting to come in on us today wouldn't you know Romans 14 12 through 23 so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know, Paul writes, and I and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably? Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let not your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God. Did you hear me, children? He that in these things serveth Christ he said, it's not about meat and drink. It's not about universal rules and regulations. It's not about laws and mandates. It's about righteousness, which is what? Doing right, striving, seeking to do right, and peace. I'm going to tell you, the only way you have peace is to trust God. Amen. To trust His grace, to trust His mercy, to trust that His strength will compensate for your weakness. Amen. And joy in the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, the Holy Ghost makes you happy even though you're as imperfect as they come. You can cuss yesterday, go to church, and the Holy Ghost come on you and fill you with joy. That's one of the wonderful things about God. Amen. He doesn't hold a grudge. Amen. He wants you to let go of yesterday. Yesterday's struggle is done and over with. Today is a new day. Amen. Your fault, your failure yesterday, your flopping yesterday you're tripping and falling yesterday don't let it stop you let God restore the joy of your salvation and get up and keep moving forward he said uh, for he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another isn't it amazing how many Christians approach other believers and honey the last thing in the universe they talk about the last thing in the world they do is say or do anything that promotes peace or anything that is edifying 
No, they're too busy sitting in judgment. They're too busy criticizing. They're too busy telling you why you're going to miss heaven because in their estimation, uh, you're not doing everything the way things must be done. Paul goes on to say, For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. In other words, if you believe something to be wrong, or if you know that something uh, is troublesome to another believer that you're doing, and it might potentially cause them to backslide and lose out with God, be mindful of that. Be mindful of your fellow believer. Folks, we're not an island. We're not going through this life all by ourselves. It's not about again this isn't about making heaven or breaking heaven this is about reward after you've gotten in are you mindful of those around you do you try to do and say things that encourage them and inspire them and help them to find the strength to keep moving forward Paul said in verse 20, For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Listen, have it to thyself before God. You must take this personally. Have faith. Have it to thyself. In other words, you're, don't be trying to spread your mandates and your dictates to everybody around you. You have a walk with God, then walk in that walk with God. I want to tell you, there is nothing more exciting than seeing a believer who walks the walk and talks the talk. They live what they preach. They're not busy trying to push it on everybody around them. They're too busy trying to live for themselves what they preach and what they teach. Amen. It's exciting to see a child of God who actually walks the walk. He said, Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. <sighs> Again, you must take it personally. It's all about you and your walk with God, your relationship with the Lord. And your walk with God and your relationship with Him hadn't got a thing in the universe to do with anybody else on this planet. I got news for you, folks. Your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, your pastor, your priest, none of those people are going to be asked by God uh, how they feel about your relationship with Him. The Lord is not going to inquire of them whether or not they give their seal of approval so that He can allow you access to His kingdom. It doesn't work that way. You've got to understand today, this is a personal journey. It's a personal walk. Don't let anybody break in on your walk with God. Don't let anybody nose in on your relationship with the Lord. What they think and what they feel about any topic, any subject, anything in your life or otherwise is none of their business and it certainly doesn't concern the Lord, not even in the least. Lastly, I want to read to you this afternoon Philippians 2 and verse 12. The Apostle Paul reminds the church at Philippi, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. I want to tell you today, you must take it personally. Amen. We're not, God has not set up universal laws and universal rules and regulations. He did not replace one law with a new law. He replaced law with faith. Amen. He replaced law with grace. It's not about, you've got to follow this set of rules and regulations over here in order to be a New Testament Christian, whereas you had to follow this set of rules and regulations over here to be an Old Testament believer. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. 
No, in the Old Testament, it was about rules and regulations. It was about the law. In the New Testament, it's about faith and obedience. Amen. And if we can just believe this great gospel, if we can just find the faith to obey what God has asked us to do, the word of God declaring, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If we can find the faith and the courage to believe this wonderful gospel and obey this wonderful message, then children, heaven is yours for the taking. Amen. Heaven is yours. After that, you must take it personally. Everybody's walk with God is their own walk. Amen.